Berger W. Armstrong with a good news of the world tomorrow. And I'm very happy that there's good news coming for the world tomorrow, but we're certainly having our troubles now. From the beautiful campuses of Ambassador College, welcome to Festival Entertainment. And now, here are the young ambassadors. You can understand what's going on today. You can understand Bible prophecy if you surrender to God. But let me tell you, if you just want to understand as a matter of curiosity that you haven't any use for God and you don't want to surrender to Him, you cannot understand prophecy and you aren't going to believe the things you hear me preach at all. Those of you that have not surrendered to God to really be obedient to Him, you don't agree very far with me, do you? Of course you don't. You can't. You're carnal-minded. And the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is hostile toward God. And if I speak the Word of God and speak it faithfully on this program, you're going to be hostile toward what I say, because what I say is the Word of God, and I get it out of the Word of God. And you're going to be hostile toward it. In the depths of religious history, there are organizations that stand as beacons of hope and enlightenment, and then there are those that shroud themselves in darkness, leaving behind a trail of twisted beliefs and unspeakable atrocities. The Worldwide Church of God, a seemingly harmless name for an entity with a dark past, belongs to the latter category. Founded by a charismatic and enigmatic figure, Herbert W. Armstrong, the Worldwide Church of God, or WCG, emerged from the shadows in the mid-20th century. Armstrong, a man with a tendency for prophecy and an uncanny ability to blend fact with fiction, set the stage for what would become one of the most controversial religious movements of its time. Within the enigmatic world of the worldwide Church of God, beliefs and doctrines took a form that blurred the line between faith and fantasy. These twisted beliefs not only set the WCG apart from mainstream Christianity, but also fueled its controversial path. One of the most bizarre and far-fetched beliefs held by the WCG was the notion of British Israelism and its variant Anglo-Israelism. According to Armstrong and his followers, modern-day Anglo-Saxon nations, particularly the United States and the United Kingdom, were believed to be the lost tribes of Israel. This belief was woven into the prophetic narrative, predicting a unique role for these nations in the end of times. The prophecies about the end of the world were perhaps the most infamous aspects of its doctrine. Armstrong, acting as a self-proclaimed prophet, made a series of doomsday predictions, setting specific dates for the return of Christ and the end of the world, which caused fear and anxiety among the followers who lived in a constant anticipation of an imminent apocalypse. The WCG was not merely a religious organization. It was a theocratic government in its own right. Armstrong wielded unparalleled authority within the church, and this control extended into the lives of its members. His interpretation of biblical law led to strict codes of conduct and rigid hierarchies within the church, resulting in a culture of unwavering obedience. To make matters even worse, the twisted beliefs of the church were not only extreme but also manipulative, fostering an atmosphere of control and uncertainty among its members. As we delve deeper into the dark history of this organization, it becomes evident that these beliefs played a pivotal role in the suffering of those who fell under its influence.
The Worldwide Church of God wasn't just a religious group. It bore all the characteristics of a cult, entangling its followers in a web of control and manipulation that is synonymous with the darker side of organized religion. Central to the church's cult-like status was its authoritarian structure. Herbert W. Armstrong, who held an almost messianic sway over his followers, controlled every facet of the church. Members were expected to follow his directives unquestioningly, leading to a climate of obedience where dissent was stifled. This power dynamic created an environment where individuality was sacrificed for conformity. The church employed isolation as a tool to maintain control. Members were discouraged from interacting with outsiders, and friendships and family ties outside the church were often severed. This isolation left individuals wholly dependent on the church for emotional and social support, effectively trapping them within its grasp and exposing them to brainwashing. Recruitment was another dark aspect of the WCG. The church used manipulative tactics to lure its new members. Many were drawn in by the promise of spiritual enlightenment and belonging, only to find themselves entangled in a web of control and manipulation once inside. The leaders exploited the vulnerabilities of their followers using fear and the promise of salvation to maintain their hold. By wielding control, isolation, and manipulative recruitment techniques, the organization held its followers captive, blurring the line between faith and exploitation. As we journey deeper into the past, we will unearth more of the chilling facets that defined its existence. The Worldwide Church of God wasn't just about unconventional beliefs and cult-like control. It left a trail of dark historical events that have scarred the memories of those who were entangled within its grasp. One of the most unsettling aspects of the church's history was its affection for making apocalyptic predictions, all of which proved false. Armstrong's dates for the end of the world came and went, leaving his followers disillusioned and emotionally scarred. The psychological toll of multiple failed prophecies weighted heavily on the hearts and minds of those who had dedicated their lives to the church's teachings. The dark history of the WCG also includes a disturbing chapter of child abuse scandals. Within the church's tightly controlled environment, numerous reports of abuse and neglect emerged. Pedophilia and gay conversion therapy was a daily occurrence. Many children suffered in silence, as the church's secretive and closed-off nature shielded the perpetrators from justice. I had turned six years old. There was one particular service, and the pastor came by and told my mom that he wanted to speak with her and to bring me with him. And he looked at my mom and he looked at me, and he said, Mrs. Swift, your son is possessed by a gay demon. Young James. They had noticed that I had really feminine mannerisms. Sexual demon. I was horrified. First, I didn't know what gay was. Second, I had a pretty good idea that demons make you scream and cuss. In the name of Christ, gay demon be God and Mammon is the story of money and the worldwide church of God based in Pasadena, California. It is a tale of backbiting and power struggle, of fat expense accounts and disinheritance in a church whose 100,000 members each year contribute $80 million. And that is more money than is collected by Billy Graham and Oral Roberts combined. It is the story of Herbert W. Armstrong, founder of the worldwide church of God, of his son Garner Ted, once thought of as heir apparent, who has now been cast out of the church by his father. 
and of an unlikely church figure, an accountant, lawyer, and businessman, chief advisor to Herbert Armstrong, Stanley Rader. Finally, it is the story of how the state of California is now trying to hold the Worldwide Church of God accountable for all the tax-exempt money that pours into its Pasadena headquarters. The California Attorney General wants the church to open its books so they can find out if Herbert Armstrong and Stanley Rader have been siphoning off church money for their personal use. That is a charge that incenses Herbert W. Armstrong. The church was not only spiritually exploitative, it was financially exploitative as well. Armstrong and the church leaders lived lavishly, supported by the donations and offerings of their struggling members. Reports of financial mismanagement and misuse of funds were abundant, further eroding the trust of the faithful. These dark historical events paint a bleak picture of an organization that was more concerned with its own interests than the well-being of its members. The WCG's legacy is tarnished by broken promises, shattered lives, and a history that serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of an unchecked power and manipulation in the name of faith. As we continue our exploration, more shadows of this organization's past will come to light. The organization was no stranger to controversies and atrocities that shook the very foundation of its existence, tarnishing its reputation and leaving a trail of pain and destruction in its wake. One of the most glaring contradictions within the WCG was the stark contrast between the opulent lifestyle of Herbert W. Armstrong and the financial struggles of the church's members. While Armstrong enjoyed a life of luxury, complete with mansions and a fleet of cars, many of his followers lived in poverty, often struggling to make ends meet. This blatant display of extravagance by the church's leader served as a constant reminder of the financial exploitation that occurred within the organization. The WCG was, of course, not tolerant of dissent or questioning of its doctrines. Members who expressed doubts or disagreements within the church's teachings were often excommunicated, cut off from their friends and family within the church, shunning a practice where former members were treated as if they no longer existed, left a trail of broken relationships and psychological trauma. Throughout its history, the WCG was embroiled in numerous legal battles and scandals, from lawsuits related to financial improperties to controversies surrounding child abuse within the church. These legal battles shed light on the extent of the organization's wrongdoings. In the early 1990s, the WCG underwent significant changes, distancing itself from its dark past. It renounced many of the unconventional beliefs and embraced a more mainstream form of Christianity. This transformation led to the formation of Grace Communion International. While GCI's beliefs and practices are more aligned with traditional Christianity, the scars of the organization's history remain. The dark historical events, from failed prophecies to child abuse scandals, reveal the organization's troubling underbelly. The lavish lifestyle of Herbert W. Armstrong, contrasted with the poverty of the faithful, speaks volumes about the financial exploitation that occurred within its walls. Excommunication and shunning of nonconformists along with the chain of legal battles, further exposed the extent of darkness within the church. The dark history of the worldwide Church of God serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers posed by religious organizations that wield unchecked power and manipulate the faith of their followers. It highlights the importance of critical thinking, individual agency, 
and the need for transparency and accountability not only within religious institutions, but every public institution we come in contact with.